Do you believe in hypnosis? It's rubbish, isn't it? There's no chance of you doing anything silly. Hi, I'm Dave Crane, and I'm inviting you to join me for my comedy stage hypnosis show on the iconic QE2. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go back to school, or to speak fluent Martian, or to dance like the world's greatest cheerleader, or maybe become a UFC world champion? You could do this, and you could do that, and this could be you too. I dare you to come and join me on stage, and together we'll discover an unbelievable version of you. Get your tickets now, and I'll see you there. Today's episode is all about the scary stuff. Imagine if a zombie took over and The Walking Dead was real. Where would you go? Where would you hide? What would you do? What would you eat? It's going to be funny, it's going to be scary, and it's going to be everything you want. It's the Halloween special. Enjoy. Oh, and make sure you keep a torch next to your bed. You never know. Hi, I'm Dave Crane, an ex-BBC journalist who transforms decision makers and business owners who are feeling unknown and scared to speak on stage into highly respected and branded industry experts who are frequently getting offered five, six and even seven figure contracts to do exactly what they did before. During the pandemic, I lost everything except the belief that, like me, the world is full of frustrated leaders and game changers with untapped potential and brilliant ideas who felt time was always against them because they were worth much, much more and just needed help to learn to jump and grow wings on the way down. And so that's what I do. I help create industry icons. Imagine being in constant demand, headhunted and interviewed because you are the visionary whose life purpose and passion are aligned. So every single day you wake up smiling, truly happy, only doing what you want, when you want and having plenty of time to spend with those you love. I created the Industry Icon Program to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step -step strategies to help you to fly. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life worth living, it's an honor to be serving you. And now it's your turn to build a legacy. So let's get started. We need to talk. This is your time to become an industry icon. Hi, welcome to a Halloween special. My name is Dave Crane, and as you probably guess, um, I'm hiding in my cupboard because today's show is about something very different, and it feels very different. Because it's Halloween, I'm doing a show all about potential zombie holocaust and what it would be like to have a zombie apocalypse. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, oh Dave, don't be ridiculous, it's a stupid idea to put in something like that. Apart from the fact you think about it, what would a, what would a zombie holocaust be like? What would it be like? Very simply, it would be like the whole world had suddenly ended and you're told by everybody you had to stay indoors. Why? Because you would catch something from anybody you spoke to or talked to. Or if you touched anything that they touched, there's a very good chance you'd catch this pandemic that made the world go absolutely bonkers and then you could catch it and it's a killer disease. Do you get kind of where I'm coming from with this? Yeah, I think you do. So with that in mind, um, in fact, let's not do the normal music, let's stick with this a little bit longer. Because it's kind of eerie. So, today is all about zombie holocausts, and it's all about the normal show about how do you survive zombies, what causes zombies, is it how likely to happen, and will we survive if it really happened for real, how long would the human race last? I'll tell you that today, and it will blow you away, and it will probably scare you quite a lot. Oh, by the way, cheers, happy Halloween. I'm in my cupboard and I'm hiding from everybody and everything because I'm kind of scared about all the different things. Now, 
I used to be worried about zombies for lots of different reasons. Non, non least because of the fact my friends used to tell me about this. My friend, George, used to say, oh, you should watch, um, what was it, 28, 28 Days After. Um, I went, okay, after what? He says, no, 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 28 days later. Or 28 days later, I said. So said, watch that. I went, um, why, what happens? He said, it's fast running zombies. I said, I don't like slow moving zombies. He said, don't worry about it. It's really funny. It's a great movie. You'll love it. It's really exciting. So I said, no, I'm not watching zombies. Wells, vampires, ghosts, any of that stuff I can handle. Freddy Krueger, don't care. It's all rubbish. Zombies. And I'll tell you why I felt funny about zombies. Very simply because... I was a DJ for many years. And so as a DJ, you spend a lot of time in nightclubs playing music and you watch people coming in and going, hey, how are you? Oh, great, fantastic. Turning into zombies by the end of the night. Oh, we never say brains. Brains, too, too difficult to talk to. No brains, that's my kind of chick. That's the kind of thing that people do. So uh, as a DJ, I've always thought spending a lot of time in rooms full of people who are losing their mind... That could go bad. And luckily, knock on wood, it never has, but at the moment, that there aren't any nightclubs up and running anyway, probably around the world. So um, that's probably not a problem for most people. So what would it feel like if you experienced a real zombie holocaust? Now, that's what we're going to be exploring. I'll also tell you the things you're going to do as part of the survival guide, and hopefully throughout today's show, we'll escape to safety. Now, I shouldn't really shout so loud, because the more I make my noise go, the more loud I get, the more danger we put ourselves in. Now, I don't know what that means... It's a Halloween special. I've got to keep my noise down. If I don't keep my noise down, there's a very good chance that these things will come back again and there's no telling where they're going to go. I'm hiding downstairs in the cupboard. And so far, the whole street's empty. A bit like coronavirus. I'm just kind of worried that if this thing continues, then there might be something else that comes along. I don't know. So anyway, broadcasting live from Dubai. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube... Twitter, Periscope. I'm trying to keep the noise down. Do you see something then? I'd love to have your thoughts, your comments. Do you enjoy Halloween? Do you not enjoy Halloween? Would you pop around somebody for a Halloween party today? If they said, let's go trick-or-treating with your kid, would you go today? It's kind of a worrying question. I don't really like being here. Do you? Mm, no, I don't think so. Today, I won't... Re I I was going to play my money thing, but if I play my money thing, it might make them a bit a bit closer as well. Today I want to teach you how to survive in a holocaust, which should kind of save you money. Don't know if that's better. No, it's clearly not better. Now here's the thing. If you're worried about zombies, then don't worry. There's no coronavirus and there's no pandemic. But what I will share with you is the fact that there's a couple of facts, and I will tell you later on, about how we would survive if it came along. So you can start making notes because you might well need to make some notes. Meanwhile, as always, welcome to the show. I hope we can have some fun. Happy Halloween. And we're not pulling any punches. Next up, let's find out where the zombies came from. Cheers. ending scenario is more terrifying, more chilling than the possibility of a zombie apocalypse. Droves of undead roaming around eating the brains of anyone they can get their hands on. But are they real? Is there any chance that zombies could actually exist? Let's find out in today's episode of Colossal Mysteries. When most of us picture a zombie, we imagine an undead, rotting corpse that will stop at nothing until it eats you alive. Usually, zombies are depicted as a result of some sort of virus that's passed to living persons through a bite. Fear of the walking dead dates back at least several thousand years to the ancient Greeks. We know this because archaeologists have uncovered grave sites all across Greece, full of ancient skeletons with heavy stones placed on their chests. Why? to keep them from getting up if they came back to life. So are zombies real or just another myth designed to keep us up at night? 
Well, as we learned in our episode on voodoo dolls, in Haitian culture, zombies were never meant to seem scary or dangerous. They were seen as tragic. You see, in the voodoo religion, the zombies aren't actually villains. They're seen as victims. In Haitian folklore, zombies aren't mindless monsters. They're people brought back from the dead and controlled by a voodoo sorcerer or priest called a bokor. Originally, zombies were meant to make men fear becoming a zombie rather than being eaten by one. The truth is most followers of voodoo religion today believe that zombies aren't real and just about all scientific evidence tends to agree. However, there are those who believe zombies might have at least some roots in the real world and their case is compelling. They believe that bokors could use ingredients like herbs, shells, animal parts and bones to create toxic powders. One of these mixtures, known as zombie powder, contains a deadly neurotoxin called tetrototoxin. It can be found naturally in the flesh of pufferfish, and once ground up with other ingredients, it can be doled out in not quite lethal doses. If you believe the rumors, some real-life bakors could either blow the powder into an unsuspecting victim's face or rub it into a wound, causing them to fall into a truly zombie-like state. Difficulty walking and speaking, combined with extreme confusion and breathing problems, would make anybody appear like an undead walker. Slightly higher doses of the toxin could even cause someone to slip into a temporary paralysis or even a coma, making them appear dead and possibly even lead to their burial, only to have them revived and dug up later. So are zombies real? No. For now, zombies are just another frightening fabrication designed to fill us with fear. And it appears to be working. And now you know more about the real history behind one of the most popular fictional monsters. Remember to subscribe and check out more mind-bending episodes of Colossal Mysteries only on DreamWorks TV. So welcome back to Speak On Stage, and today it's a special Halloween scary version. I'm now outside of my apartment, I managed to get away, and as you can see, it's not being kind. We're going to be investigating what would happen if the world was actually um, under a, a zombie pandemic, <laughs> which is slightly worse than coronavirus. I never thought I'd say that, but it is true. I'm also about having a real laugh with The Walking Dead, and I've been a huge fan of The Walking Dead um, since it started watching every episode, sometimes several times, and it's, it caught, caught me at the beginning of kind of scary, hatey, lovey, but don't want to take my eyes off it. You know when you're a kid and you had to sit and watch TV and you'd go like that and cover your mouth so you couldn't scream, or you'd look behind the sofa and your head would be like that and he's like this. That was my relationship with much of the horror stuff. Now the thing is, I tend not to watch horror stuff because generally I don't care. I find it funny or I'm just not into gore and stuff. But one of the strangest things about it is the people who've been able to deal with the pandemic better than anybody else, by far, are the ones who are into horror movies. Now that sounds like a really strange thing to say. Why should it be, Dave, that they're much better than most people are dealing with it? Well, because they live in a world of what happens if something goes terrible, how can I get my head around it? So the subconscious has been built up to deal with these kind of challenges, not necessarily a zombie holocaust, but just the idea that there can be danger. And so they flatline, not dead, but just chilled out with it, generally better than most people. So just well done for the zombie fans. Well done. I'm really proud of you. In a kind of creepy, not really proud of you, didn't help anybody kind of way. So, I'm here outside now, and I've got my special survival watch. This I got actually from Amazon, and I'll show it to you now, it's kind of cool. It's got a couple of bits in it, it's got this little flint that comes off here. You see that, there's a flint, and that allows me to light a fire. It's got a whistle, as if I want to make some noise when I'm hiding from zombies. It's got a compass, uh, here. See the compass there? Yes. I see a light, which probably doesn't work anymore, but it was good when I bought it. Oh. No, battery's gone. I'm stuffed for that then. I've got a special knife, which I can pull out that's got a multi-tool on it. You see? Because if I ever need to do anything like start a car, that's really going to help. Nope. Um, and I've got various bits and pieces that help the, the splints and so on. Um, so that would be... Oh, and of course, the strap. 
unravels and becomes about three meters long. So if I ever need to hang myself because I've had enough, surely that'll be good enough. But apparently it's good for a hammock or it's good for fishing or a few bits and pieces. And these are really cool gifts actually. You can get them for friends that are worried about coronavirus or worried about what happens when the zombies arrive. And uh, they cost generally, I think mine was about, about $10 each or something. Just go and have a look. Look them up, they're called survival bracelets. And I think they're kind of cool in a kind of Dave, stop playing with gadgets. Do you really think the world's gonna end kind of way? To which the answer is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of points in that direction a little bit, doesn't it? No, don't, don't you think? Now, what would happen in a real case of this? Um, we will look into that. We'll also look into what you could do, which is bonkers. Uh, and also we're going to have the laugh later on with something. Oh, and also we're going to find out what would be like first from your own eyes if you had to run away from a zombie holocaust. If you're scared, by the way, then I apologize. It's still me. It's still Dave. I just thought we'd do something different today because kind of the current climate where everyone's in lockdown and kind of the fact I kind of find it funny. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, Walking Dead, you're shopping, Walking Dead Kids, Walking Dead. There's a lot of different shows. Most of them are rubbish. Walking Dead's a bit rubbish, but Daryl and Carol and Barrel and Charol, fantastic. Money's on them. So next up, I'm going to try and escape in silence down the street. Um, what I'm going to do is give you now the zombie survival guide, all the things you need to consider doing if you're ever stuck and the zombies come to find us. Ready? Good. Here we go. This is a public service announcement brought to you by the Pimsleur Approach. You know it's coming. A zombie apocalypse is imminent. The question isn't if, the question is when, and most importantly, how to survive. In order to give you the best odds of staying alive, we've delved into recent research in necroneurology and identified several key features of zombie behavior. First, we must identify the underlying disorder inherent in the zombie psyche. We must get inside their heads and find out what really makes them tick. Zombies suffer from Consciousness Deficit Hypoactivity Disorder, CDHD, or the loss of rational, voluntary, and conscious behavior replaced by delusional, impulsive aggression, the inability to coordinate motor linguistic behaviors, and perhaps the most problematic issue, an insatiable appetite for human flesh. Second, we must understand the zombie brain structure. Through detailed scans, the exact brain areas that have been destroyed can be reconstructed, allowing us to see significant brain tissue loss. Recreated in the human brain, the damage profile corroborates the behavioral problems of zombies. Luckily, these very problems offer us strategies we can implement to avoid being bitten and, most important, continue staying alive. Survival tip number one. It is easy to observe zombies' slow and uncoordinated movements caused by damage to the cerebellum. This severe ataxia makes them move at a snail's pace and allows the human to easily outrun them. Don't worry about warming up. Just run. This may be enough to reach a safe hiding place. Survival tip number two. Zombies suffer from amnesia caused by loss of the hippocampus, leading to extremely short memory spans. You can take advantage of this by staying quiet, hiding, and waiting it out. If they do find you, see tip number one and sprint. Survival tip number three. Due to damage to the parietal cortices, zombies can't feel pain. If you can't kill them by damaging the brainstem, don't try to fight them. They won't feel a thing. Instead of tiring yourself out, try a single swipe at their heads with an ax. Completely detaching the head from the spine is optimal. Survival tip number four. Zombies are very easily distracted due to the loss of the posterior parietal cortices. It is difficult for them to coordinate hand-eye movements, perceive more than one object at a time, or fixate their eyes. Take advantage of this defect by distracting them. Throw a ball for them to fetch. Or better yet, hand them something they can really relate to an electronic gadget such as a smartphone or iPad. Survival tip number five. If you are unable to outrun approaching zombies, try mimicking them. Due to their confusion and misconceptions, they'll mistake you for one of them, buying you critical moments for escape. Remember, when we understand a zombie's head, we avoid becoming one of the undead. So there you go. See, it's thought it was easier than you thought. And now, that, while that was going on, I managed to get out to the forest. 
And as you can probably guess, uh, I've been playing with a green screen overnight, but that's a completely separate thing. So I'm now in the forest, there's a deer behind me. I'll keep the noise down slightly. I don't want to scare the deer, but even so, more than that, I don't want to attract zombies. Now, there's a couple of things about zombies which you need to know. And I love your thoughts, I love your comments, and if you're having a laugh with me as well, then that's fine. If you're not having a laugh, and it is freaking you out a little bit, then I apologise. At least I got out of that scary room earlier, which was never good. A um, couple of things you need to know about uh, zombies versus humans, even though zombies, of course, were humans, uh, is the fact that man is the most dangerous predator of all time. That's why man dominates the planet. So... Even if man was to be up against man, when I say man, I mean man and woman and child and LGBTQ and everything. I'm not, not naming anything, right? I'm just saying that we're very good at being predators. We're very good at defending ourselves. I'm going to be sharing with you in a few moments a study that was done to see what would happen if we really had one break, break out. In 100 days, how many humans would be left on the planet? This is going to freak you out. But I will say a couple of things. Oh, I'll save it for that. I'll save it for that. Yo, I won't say that. Yes, I will say that. No, I'll tell you a couple of things. If we were in nature and zombie holocaust broke out, nature fills a gap. Now, this is the thing that people don't maybe think about with all the shows. If you find a human that's got its brain missing and it's going, I'm walking all around, to nature, it's a walking buffet. So first of all, all that rotting flesh, all the parrots are like, hey, we can start chomping down on that. So we'll start getting rid of that. Secondly, you've got to think about the fact that Things like the Achilles tendon are needed for us to walk. If that perishes or disappears or gets eaten or get hacked at, they can't walk. So they have to crawl, which makes it a little bit easier. It's just like walking over crocodiles, kind of. Uh, not that you should walk over crocodiles to practice anyway. So that's kind of a little bit easier. By the way, I love your thoughts. I love your comments. Let me know where you are. It's Halloween, so I thought we'd just do something different rather than try and talk about how to improve your business. I thought I'd just share with you how to survive. And if we do get a zombie holocaust uh, breaking out and the apocalypse is here, just like The Walking Dead, then you can just rewind this. Get off LinkedIn as long as the electricity hasn't gone down. And with that, you should be able to find a way to survive. So it's kind of, it kind of helps you in businesses. Did you hear something? Okay, so as I was saying, nature fills a gap. So the bacteria would be massive. They would attack every zombie and start breaking it down. And that would spread like a disease as well. So within a very short amount of time, they're just walking meat sacks. So that would be better. And also, remember what stops all the lions, the tigers, the bears, and everything else from walking around? Us. They're scared of us. We walk around with guns and we stop them doing anything. The minute that you stop being the number one predator on the planet, other predators step up. So rats would have a field day with it. Um, just domestic animals, dogs would enjoy it. Uh, and this is without looking at them becoming zombified. Because there's a reason why in The Walking Dead there are no animals that get zombified. It's because Robert Kirkland, the guy who wrote the, the, the cartoon, the, the comic of The Walking Dead, sorry, graphic novel, because we're all grown-ups, um, he couldn't draw animals. So that's why there were no animals in The Walking Dead. Didn't know that, did you? There's lots of deer and dogs and stuff. I almost said a bad word. Um, so that's why there's no animals. But supposing that it didn't affect them then you're going to end up with things like, for instance, crows. Crows and flying animals like that would just multiply. There's nothing to st stop them. So every time they saw humans, they'd just get on them, peck, 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 and the humans would drop because skeletons can't walk anywhere. You've got to have all the bits and stuff attached to it. So um, we would not be the number one predator on the planet. There'd be lots of other things stepping up to fill the gap, whether it's foxes, unlikely, rabbits, vegetarian, snails, um, probably about the same pace as zombies, but other things that are natural predators would start taking over and start running a place. Does that make sense to you? Good. All right. Also, uh, remember the fact that humans are the number one predator, so we would very quickly learn to deal with it. Same as you when you've got an infectious disease that could kill anybody within a very short amount of time, uh, and it's invisible, uh, and you come if you come close to people, hug them, talk to them, you can catch something. With PPE, with masks, and with gloves, and with social distancing, even without a vaccine, most of us are going to be more than fine. And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to the people who have suffered, and I feel for you, and completely i'm not saying that i'm just saying it from a halloween point of view we came to terms with it most of us came to terms with the science of it very very quickly and so the distancing went on okay we'll be looking at the actual facts and figures of that in a moment meanwhile what i want to do with, with you now is share something very very cool indeed 
Um, this is another video of, and it's called Parker, you know, P-A-R-K-O-U-R. And it's when these guys do these daredevil things of jumping on buildings and jumping over like walls and stuff. And they've got like a GoPro and they go really fast. Now these are brilliant and the guys who do it are nutters, but it's never less than a million percent entertaining. What would happen if a real zombie holocaust broke out? You are one of the soldiers who's going to investigate and suddenly you came up against something right in your face. Yes? Are you with me? Are you excited? You should be. If you're squeamish, don't, if you're squeamish, don't watch. If you're not squeamish and like me, you can't take your eyes off it, then you will love this. This is zombie parkour and it's on Speak On Stage. And uh, look away if you don't like it, but I think it's fab. Let me know your comments. Speak On Stage. If you go check him out, I'll copy you. Check him out. Take the ammo. What you got? Happy Halloween, how are you? Are you scared? Yeah, you should be. Uh, it's a bit of fun, happy Halloween, and I thought I'd do something different today by imagining what it would be like if we actually had a zombie holocaust. And here I am outside, surviving the fear 
of being stuck with uh, nowhere to go and everywhere you go there's these things now what would that actually mean the scientists the scientists the boffins uh did a test uh using um well students actually verbatim no they didn't they did a test to see uh on computer what would happen with a business model of zombies if you put in all the factors of what zombies would do and what would they affect so um with that they looked into it i say they i don't know what the name of them is i'll, I'll probably I'll look in here so guess how many people will survive a zombie holocaust and you can find this on forbes it's actually it was done in 2017 so you can find it in quite a few different um publications because everybody reported it because everyone's a huge fan of the walking dead uh, which I am indeed, which you can probably see why I'm doing this and not doing other stuff, uh, but probably do werewolves next year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll tell you what I used to like. I used to like vampires until Twiglet came along, Twilight to everybody else. And as soon as they start being sparkly and beautiful and darling, look at my nails. Everyone's got big nails in horror. But I just went, no, 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 vampires don't do that. Walking Dead, well, I know it doesn't happen, but at least make your vampires cool. Like, um... What do I like? Um, I like the Anne Rice books. They were very cool and um, other stuff. What was that film with Adrian Pazdar? Long, long time ago. Very early one done by Catherine Bigelow who went on to win Oscars for doing um, lots of big movies. Can't remember, can you? And I can't remember anyway. Anyway, it was a good one. It's good. So... Uh, so how many people would survive a zombie holocaust? Let's have a look at it. The facts and figures come from a test that was done from students at the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Leicester, and that's in the UK. And so they looked at it and they basically brought all the bits together to make a computer program. What would happen if you put it in that the zombies arrived and they also assumed that if you were attacked by a zombie, there's a 90% um, probability that you'd be infected. Um, they said that within that... Um, a zombie would die after 20 days if it didn't feed on brains and the zombies can basically have one person per day and then they're full. So that's enough brains. Just like if you go and you get too much fast food, you go, oh, hey, I'm, I'm probably full. So the set the population of the world at 7 billion. Are you reading about this, by the way, as I'm doing it? So a population of the world at the time is at 7 billion. It doesn't last 7 billion for very long. I can promise you. If I'm speaking a bit fast, I'm sorry. I'm kind of excited by this show. It's Halloween, and it's all about zombies for fun, which I think is funny. Um, not funny, but it's funny. And if it happens for real, then it's not funny then. And if it ha did happen for real, by the way, uh, I can promise you this, I would get bitten. Well, if I was single, I'd get bitten, because I'd just do it. The odds of me wanting to stay around and live in a zombie pandemic where everybody could bite me uh, zero. I don't want to know. I'd probably bite myself and then just end up just, that's it, done. My money's on the zombies. Okay, that's what we do. With the family, obviously you wouldn't do that. You'd bite your family and that, no, you wouldn't. You just, I don't know what I'd do. But that's the point. Oh, with Christmas for you, would you go trick-or-treating? Are you going trick-or-treating? Are you going around for a Halloween holiday or Halloween, Halloween party tonight? What, what do you think? Yes, no. Give me a yes or a no. Interesting. So anyway, let's go back to this survey. Um, so they basically put it into the computer uh, and they said, right, what would happen when it all hits the fan? So put it in again. Day 20, the zombies have gone around and it's just suddenly exploded. Before then, it was a quiet pandemic. Day 20, it goes bonkers. Now, we're not putting in barriers like water or land. We're just treating it all as one thing. Zombies can swim or they can float or whatever it is. So we've got this basic idea. On day 100 of a zombie holocaust, don't read it, don't read it, don't read it. Do you know how many of us will be alive? 181 people left on the planet. 181. Let me turn the music up. 181 people left on the planet if it was a zombie holocaust. Bit of a sobering thought, isn't it? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Dave, that probably doesn't include me. No, it doesn't include me either. But let me just share with you a couple of factors they put into it then. Because that was kind of grim. 181 people? Probably not anybody I know. And probably somebody who owes me money would be left with me. And I'm like, well, where's the money then? Oh, you want money now? Let's break into a bank. Okay, oh, it's full of zombies. Don't worry about... Do you know what I mean? So 181 people on the planet would be challenging. So then they decided to rework it with different stats. Because, of course, everybody just got really worried. And the idea was then that you could emigrate or you could stay in a zone and they wouldn't go to different zones, they'd stay within their zones. 
So it gave you the opportunity to then last a little bit longer, kind of a little bit longer. And according to this, it says then you start off with one zombie and they've got three zones, A, B, and C. So you start off with, with zone A, which was connected to zone B, and B was connected to zone C, but B and C, A wasn't connected to C. So at least you have a little bit of chance to sort of get your act together. And you basically run to the mountains, you do all that kind of stuff, but they reckon that in about three weeks, again, it would go bonkers. About a week later, the zombie population would decrease. Now, the thing they put in that was different for this was a zombie could live for, for a year without biting anybody, not just 20 days. So if a zombie lived for a year without biting somebody, then what they worked out was that we would basically live around to, uh, after 100 days, there'd be 273 uninfected people left in the world. That's not much better, is it? It's not. But then they decided to put some different factors in. I'm just reading it because I want to get this right from the business models. So first of all, people are not going to sit around and go, oh, I've been bitten. Oh, I thought he was bringing pizza. I should have seen the bloodshot eyes and the kill, kill, kill brains conversation coming out of them. There was a danger there. So what it's saying is that people would then not go into like shopping malls to hide. They'd go for mountains, they'd go for um, places where you could spot them from a mile off. You get in boats and do all that. And that changed the game quite considerably because it meant that we'd actually be able to survive long enough to be able to cut our losses and the zombies would be gone at one point, which I'll tell you about in a minute. So then we could start reproducing babies at a rate of maybe one every three years per couple. If there's a couple, I think you'd make a couple after that long. It doesn't matter who the couple is. Granny, come here, I'm ready. No, you wouldn't. Uh, can I delete that, by the way, it's, it's gone. All right, so then, uh, according to this, um, you get rid of all the zombies in a thousand days. If we were able to look after ourselves, and what we'd end up with, let me just see if it's got the figure here. Um, it says that the figure of the amount of us that are left would be, oh, don't press that button, cancel that, would be about 700 and out of, if it's 200 million, uh, uninfected left after 100 days, um, we're a lot better than losing 7.5 billion. So that's basically how it all work out. Um, if zombies were delayed, um, okay. So that means that we'd have about 200 million people surviving on the planet. Everyone else is eaten by zombies, but with that, you could roughly get away with it. With that, you could kind of get away and last until day 1000, which is about 2.7 years. And then we can start the population going again. And they reckon that um, about what? About 25 years later, we're starting to build up our population, start to repopulate. Zombies have all gone and we're all good and so on. But that means that ultimately, out of every 10,000 people, only 88 people survive. So that looks bad because it probably is bad. Um, but the zombies would have a harder time than anything because they would have nothing left to feed on, thank goodness, um, and they disappear shortly after. And so there we are. That's some nice cheery stats to make you feel great about what would happen if zombies took over. I hope that's made you feel good. As I now have to navigate myself, it's looking dark out there. It's looking overcast, a little bit scary. And let's see if I can get away from everything. It's not great. Um, hope you're enjoying the Halloween setting. Uh, it's speak on stage. So here we are with Speak on Stage, and this is the scary bit. How to survive a zombie holocaust if a walking dead really came true. And today's just a one-off show. It would be a one-off because after that, we get you. But uh, I thought with the coronavirus and everything else, uh, I know it's a bit tongue-in-cheek, tongue very deep in cheek. Uh, it's not a million miles away from if that one step happened where people actually decided to catch it and eat you at the same time. Now, there are precedents in nature for that to happen. There is some kind of... Um, fungus that takes over an ant and turns into a zombie so it can then direct things to eat other ants or ants to eat other ants. i don't know it's not good but we won't dwell on that let's just stay in a happy place instead okay so with that in mind let's look at the things that you can do in a zombie holocaust which would make everybody survive and and, and hopefully be groovy and very happy as well not gravy because of course you eat that with meat which technically you'd be uh, in a zombie holocaust the picture you can see there is from a zombie uh tv show walking dead that's rick on horseback and uh, that was actually, I think it's superimposed with Wuhan, where the coronavirus originally started uh, as a picture with the backdrop there. So, <laughs> not so good. All right, so let's get into it. What could you do? What would you do if we're stuck and we had to deal with a coronavirus style thing that actually meant people at people? First of all, let's remember this. 
Man is the biggest predator of all time. We are the most dangerous predator. We would be able to work out a way to deal with it. It wouldn't just be us versus zombies. It would be us working it out. So you've got to be careful that we would beat pandemic, pandemic, same as we are now, and we would beat the zombies. Number two is this one. He said, with his computer failing, that's the first thing that's going to go for computers. Okay, uh, learn how to make fire without matches. So that means with, with wood... Or anything that keeps you warm, safe, and attracts attention. Give me two seconds, actually. I hear my family outside. I don't want to make sure that they are safe after all. It's just freaking me out a little bit. You just uh, keep an eye out for things. Bye! 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 They've gone. Nothing. That was a bit spooky and scary. I'm sure I heard them. I better close the door again and not go downstairs. All right, so going back to that. So we would learn how to use fire, which would be very strategic because it keeps you warm, helps you cook if you want to cook, uh, which keeps you safe and also can attract attention if you want to tell people, I'm here, come rescue me. Or also, if you decide that what you want to do is, is start a distraction, zombies love it because it's it's kind of there and shiny in a way. And so they go off and, and, and find it. So that's another thing you need to keep be aware of when it comes to zombies. Are you enjoying the show, by the way? It's a bit different, it's a bit scary. If you like zombies, you're probably going, hoo, hoo, hoo. and if you don't, it's saying, Dave, I'll never watch you again. You're freaking me out. But that parkour thing was very good. All right. So number three, boil water. You're going to need a clean supply of water and you need to know how to make it. Uh, I would not recommend recycling your own because it's going to taste like pee. So make sure that you have a way of boiling water. About a minute will boil it clean. Uh, and apparently, if you're in the mountains, about three minutes is about right because of the temperature. The the, the heightened um, distance means that you're going to have to have a different effect when you do it. Okay, learn how to get water as well. Some places have a lot of rain, some don't. You might have to bottle it, but you might have to see places where you can collect it and so on. All right, so number four, get used to survival techniques. I've already shown you my survival watch. Yeah, my bracelet. Look at that. Cool, isn't it? So make sure that you know enough stuff, which means doing a crash course on where to stay. What to eat? Don't just go restaurant guide. Okay, what we're gonna do? Uh, let's go to. We'll go to Mucky D's. We'll go to Subs, and we'll probably pop into the Burger K on the way because you know you gotta have a balanced diet. No, no, you are the balanced diet. So you need to work out what you eat, grubs and, and the worms and all that stuff. If you have to, some survivalists swear by it. Mm, yum! Look, insect full of protein. No. No, 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 I don't care what it's full of. I'm not eating it. I would prefer to go back to Mucky D's for obvious reasons. Shouldn't say that. Get this. Okay. So, therefore, um, you need to know also what to do when faced with all those survival things. Where do you hide? What do you need to protect yourself again? Do you need to put plastic bags over your socks so you don't get a trench foot and stuff like that? These are the things you really need to know. So, you probably have to buy a book in it because the internet might be down because you, probably, you couldn't uh, charge your phone unless you got a solar powered phone. In which case, happy days. But who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, very funny. Okay, number five, first aid. You'd have to know first aid, basic medicine, how to patch wounds, how to how to stop cuts from getting more infected, because uh, you never know what's going to happen, and you might need to patch yourself and or other people at a moment's notice. <clears throat> My suggestion is if somebody goes, oh, look, I've got a bite mark, I've got a bite mark, can you get me a plaster? You say, yeah, the plaster is about a thousand miles down the road. Let me just go and get it for you. Oh, I might go very slow, but just stay here. You should be fine, you should be fine. Oh, look, badger, 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 badger. Yeah, that's what I do. So if you're with me, I'm apologizing now in advance. I'm not coming back. All right, number six is this. Oh, they're still downstairs, that's nice. Still alive, we found this still alive, Dave. That's better. Okay, learn to fish, hunt, and forage. That means learn to basically get your own food. Now, if you're like me and you're an entertainer, then that means that you're used to going out and getting your own business, which is why during the coronavirus and lockdown, I've been knocking on doors and still been fine. And many people have been going, no, but I'm waiting for things to get better. Things won't get better. In that case, with a zombie holocaust, guess what things are gonna get? Um, things are gonna get a lot worse. So you're going to have to need to learn to be able to get food. And for a while, there's going to be tins and noodles and stuff like that. And you'll find boxes full of stuff in supermarkets, but also uh, full of zombies at the supermarkets, which is actually pretty close to what supermarkets are like a lot of the time. If you go shopping and you've got your headphones on, you look around and just go, what are these people doing? 
Oh, the beans, please. Beans, yeah, beans, please. And they've got the milk over there. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. Fine. So that's basically what it's like. So you're going to have to find a way to get your own food from wherever your food would come from. Number seven is this one. Um, excuse me. Learn a safe place to camp and sleep. Remember, when you're sleeping, you can't protect yourself. So you want to go up as high as can as you can do. Because the last thing you want is things that go chomp in the night. You know what I mean? That's a little joke. Because normally you'd say you don't want things that go bump in the night. Chomp in the night is my pun on it, which is not as funny as I thought it was. So let's move on rapidly to the next thing. All right, number eight, get used to endurance running. Now, the thing is with endurance, it means actually that you can't just say, I'll just run a little bit and stay ahead of it. Because if you trip, and in horror movies, they always trip. Oh, no, my, my knee's gone. Or, oh, no, my, my shoelace is un untied. I'll just take a bit of time in plain sight to tie it up. No, 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 no. Tie your shoelaces like a, like a mother. Like your mother would tie them. That's what I meant. So then you don't have any problems. But you're going to have to use to get them fit. Do not get bladdered, as in do not drink too much. You can drink your coffee, but it's going to be cold and granulated. And you might not want to waste your water because it dehydrates you. But this is good coffee. It's by Burberry Mug, no less. Very nice. So with that, you'd probably want to work out how to get fit. You'd learn how to be fit anyway. <coughs> you'd be running all the time, and you'd tell people on a moment's notice we should run, but run very quietly. Don't go, oh, 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 oh. I'm really tired. Oh, my goodness. I should have got fitter at school. Don't do that because they hear yeah, we're not deaf. We might be stupid, but not deaf. Number nine, get used to heights. As I mentioned before, uh, if you don't like heights like me, you're not a big fan, then just get used to it because there's a difference between being dinner or being up high and going woohoo i think the woohoo wins quite a lot so get used to that climbing leads to safer ground in 99.99 percent of cases especially when it means uh, getting to the mountains and getting away from most things all right number 10 is this always think of a worst case scenario think of an escape plan you walk and this is what military people do they always think about the angles james bond um, Jason Bourne, Jack Bauer, anybody else got a JB in the name? Jimmy Blulamana? Nope, not a real person. But anybody who's, who's in military will walk into a building and will be working out what the angles here, who could be a danger. Obviously, when you go into a zombie holocaust, always think about your escape route, always think about what could happen if that happens and this happens, always think about if you leave your stuff stashed. Uh, near the door or so people couldn't steal it because the biggest predator is not going to be the zombies they're just going to be a pain in the butt or in the neck or in the head or wherever they bite you it's humans surviving against humans because there are no rules it's going to go really bonkers isn't it people are not going to say oh you know what you know what you have that sandwich I'll just lie here and cry no sandwich ar, 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 ar. that's a zombie biting you because they wanted a sandwich as well uh, unless they're vegetarian in which case it'd be no no have you got anything a cucumber in please not really so you've got a real challenge in the fact that you have humans that you have to deal with, uh, as well as everything else, uh, and you have to make alliances with people that you trust, and you have to have a real reason for the ecosystem of watching each other's back. Otherwise, they might run, or they might disappear, or if you, in the middle of the night, find zombies coming, you might have to go and leave them, not wake them up, just in case they make a noise, and you get caught. Not good. Not good. You have to work out a plan with them. So make sure you've got escape plans and think through every scenario, and if you like somebody, tell them what your escape plans are, and they tell you. You realize that today's show is rubbish. I'm making it all up. None of this is true. We're never going to have a virus that would turn us all into zombies or one that would be a national or global pandemic. Second bit's true. First bit is still, to my knowledge, uh, true. All right, so there you've got to look at what you're going to need. Um, I would suggest that you get yourself... I mean, don't get... Yourself, uh, here, I've shown you this earlier. I will, look, uh -oh. I've got this survival tool, right, which you got for about $10, um, which will, you get fishing rods and all sorts of, well, fishing line, not fishing rod. And this is the knife that you get with it, and it's very sharp. Ow! But I don't think you're going to kill anybody unless it's an ant and it doesn't move very fast. So you're going to need something. Now, what's the best kind of weapon you can get? Probably a machete. Why? Because it's good hand-to-hand, -hand, it's good for chucking at somebody's head, and it's good for using for just normal stuff. So machetes would be good. A little knife might not be strong enough if somebody's got a bigger knife. Remember uh, Crocodile Dundee? Um, not be fighting crocodiles or a man called Dundee, but you get the basic idea of that. You'd look for um, a weapon, maybe a projectile weapon. If you're good at bows and arrows, that'd be fantastic, just like Daryl from The Walking Dead. Or a crossbow, not so much, because you have to load it. And it could take ages. A machine crossbow will be good, but they only, they only exist in, in Mad Max. 
Um, but some kind of gun. If you live in a country that doesn't let you have guns, like uh, like Dubai, for instance, then you are going to have to get one from somewhere, or just make it out of paper, and as it flops like that, just go bang, and then run. And hopefully the zombie will start laughing, and you, you get a, a head start on it. But you're going to have to find something, usually something with a bolt on it, a gun with a bolt on it, because then you know it's going to work. Okay. Ideally silent, ideally reusable, and if you and, and what I would do is because I'd be thinking about the optics, I want to make sure that I look good. So that's why I've got this on my head, you know, for my hair to be able to chill out and look like I'm a survivalist. I just look like um, I look like somebody who's unemployed, really, don't I? To be honest. Okay. Well, anyway, that would be the, the deal. Um, because this can double as a face mask. It can double as a a a a a pair of pants. Um, if you don't like wearing them uh, because you've <laughs> pooed them because you're stuck in a zombie holocaust. Number 12, uh, stick to the waterways when possible um, or stick to places that haven't got like normal roads because they're going to be full, full of traffic uh, and full of uh, potential zombies. So stay silent. Get onto waterways is useful because of the fact it changes so much and therefore you can make no noise while you're traveling around like a barge. There's one really funny TV show in the UK called Zomboat where they're on a barge. Now, if you don't know what a barge is or, 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 or one of these long boats, is they move very slowly. So you could probably walk a little bit. If you ran, you could catch up with one. But if you're walking, you can't. Uh, narrow boats, they're called. And we've got them on, on, on these uh, the barges. We've got them on these special pathways and, and rivers in the UK and many countries, Holland, places like that. And so when you go on a, on a narrow boat, then you move slowly and you can recharge the batteries. And you watch TV for a little while and all the rest of it. And it's a really beautiful experience. But you go through fields and don't see anybody. So this TV show, Zomboat, is all about being chased by zombies as they escape on a, on a barge, on a, on a, on a narrow boat, which is going very slowly. So they're slightly ahead of the zombies all the time, but not by much, because they can't go much faster than that. Very funny, doesn't sound it, sounds scary, but trust me, it's great. All right, getting on to this, so stick to the waterways as possible, as much as you can do. Number 13 is make sure that you learn to read people better. I mentioned this earlier, we are the ultimate survivors. You want to make sure that you're with people that you trust, and that should be really your family members. But sometimes if they throw you at a zombie and say, oh, by the way, have you seen Dave? Since uh, since coronavirus, he's put on so much weight, he's like a buffet for all of you. So what we'll do now is we'll just kick him in the leg so he goes, ow, makes a lot of noise, and then you can chomp down on him. We'll get in the car and we'll go, Dave, you know what? We love you, but it's going to be cheaper at Christmas. Bye. Bang. That's what I'm scared of. And that's my wife and my kid. I'm joking. Okay, so with this, by the way, if you just join me, you've missed a load of fun or a load of horror, depending on how you look at it. Or Dave's Gone Bonkers. A bit of everything. Now, we're looking at how to survive a zombie holocaust. And you're saying, but there isn't one. I know. But if there was one, you'd be watching my show. Right now, you're going... <sighs> but you wait. Number 14, protective gear. Can you imagine having, like, a Kevlar suit? Or at least all the joint bits that you got. Um, with, so it's all... Unbiteable, shall we say? So I, I would start off with Kevlar, like like Iron Man, or I'd go for scuba diving kit because it's really hard to bite through that rubber. Uh, I would guess because I've never tried, but um, if I did, then I would probably say that I don't know. Um, stuff as pl splash proof is probably best. So you're looking at PPE gear. So you're gonna have like um, something on a mask. Stop stuff getting in your mouth. Ideally, some kind of goggles or glasses um, that don't fall off. Mine fall off all the time when I sneeze. You might have seen it in the show with something go on the floor. On the floor. And then I try and find them because I can't find glasses without glasses. Should have two pairs of glasses. One to find the glasses, one to be glasses. So technically, one of them could be for show and the other one could be for real. So I'd have, a, like, when somebody calls you four eyes, I can go, that's not true. Six. Six eyes, mate. Get your, ins get your insults right. Uh, and last but not least is this one. I think it is. I'm hoping it is. And maybe it would be. Okay. Stop playing by the rules. Nobody else is going to play by the rules. If you think about it, really, if it was a zombie holocaust, I don't think the police are going to come around and say, by the way, we got a complaint from you the, the other day. Um, you, we got a complaint, but somebody came around looking for food. And they're very polite. In fact, we didn't say anything. We just came in your house and uh, you sat watching TV. Um, the TV wasn't on. Obviously, there's no electricity and uh, there's nothing to be broadcast. Uh, but they came over just to say hi in a kind of, oh, kind of way. And you put an axe through their head. That's not nice, is it? Really? We should do that. And it'd be kind of like, uh, have you seen... Um, have you seen Eddie Izzard when he talks about the cake or death sketch on the Death Star? 
So Darth Vader's on the Death Star, it's Death Star Canteen, and of course people are going there to die, or to get put down. So we give them a choice, it's like, look, we'd like cake or death. You say, cake or death? Yeah, we like cake or death. Um, I'll have cake, please. Okay, there you go, there's your cake. Next, cake or death? Um, can I have cake as well? You can have cake, there you go. Enjoy, you can sit over there, have a table. Uh, anybody else? Cake or death? Uh, cake? Fantastic, there you go. Enjoy your cake with some cream on the tables, you can help yourself. Next one, cake or death? Oh, I'll have cake as well. Well, oh, I'm afraid we've run out of cake. What? We've got no cake, we've got, we only have three pieces, uh, but unfortunately we didn't realise there's going to be such a rush, so uh, you've got, uh, you've got no cake. So what, you're saying my, my choices are death or death? Yeah, I'm afraid that's it. Well, that doesn't seem very fair. No, it's not fair. That's just the way that death really works. Well, is there anything else? Would you like chicken? I love chicken. Would you like some white wine with that? Yes, please, thank you very much. And then it's just like being on a plane. He's very surreal, he's very funny, and he's funnier than that. Okay, so with that in mind, then let's look at what this whole show is all about. I'm gonna finish off today, by the way, by sharing with you the Walking Dead um, comedy, a Red Nose Day special, which is very funny, and also something from um, Bad Lip Reading, which is when they do the Bibbidi Bobbidi song from The Walking Dead. And you don't know what that is, but if you're a Walking Dead fan, you'll laugh your head off. If you're not, then you will become one, uh, and it's worth watching as you're stuck indoors. There's about 10 seasons already you can watch on Netflix and possibly on other channels too. Uh, and uh, it cheers you up. After a while, the most depressing show in the world makes it feel better. Because you say, well, at least they're outside. At least I get to talk to people when we're not getting eaten. Love your thoughts, love your comments, make sure you subscribe, and uh, next, uh, look at the Industry Icon program and tell you how you can get loads of free stuff from me on Speak On Stage. So, welcome to Speak On Stage. I'll typically take you through this very quickly so I can explain exactly what it is. So Speak On Stage is what my proper show is, and normally most weekdays, this is show number 71, by the way, because uh, yesterday we did Toilet Paper Diaries showing all about the elections. So t if you enjoy this show, by the way, we do proper subjects, not just zombie stuff, but if you really want to become much more effective at speaking, then this is great. Not just speaking, but brand building. The two fit perfectly well together. You might be saying, right now, Dave, there's no gigs. There are gigs, I'm doing gigs, trust me, but they're also online. But also, the more you speak, the more you communicate, the more you can do a show like this, podcast, um, radio, you could do uh, short videos, you could write, it's all your voice being expressed. You can position yourself as an industry icon. Now you're wondering, would I be any good at that? And let me just illustrate to you how you find out. Go to speakonstage.com. And there you'll see, um, a, you'll see two buttons. The green one there is for joining now. You can have a look at the special modules for you to train for an incredibly low rate to become a brilliant speaker. But you might want to do a survey if you want to work with me directly. Go to the gold button above my head there, the one that says industry icon, and press that. Once you press it, you go through to this page, the Industry Icon page, and then you get to take a free survey so we can find out how good your brand is, how well you're doing, and where you need to be able to work on certain things. And then after that, we can work out where it's worth us working together, in which case you get a free link to a Calendly um, booking. You can book me for 10 minutes just to go over your brand, go over your results, and find out whether we could get you to be positioned really well in your industry. The idea is if you can become a great speaker and you can be positioned as an expert in your industry, you become a go-to person when it comes to getting business done, and that has a byproduct of marketing you really highly and being seen really highly. So you spend less on Google ads, and less on Facebook ads, and less on LinkedIn ads, and YouTube ads, and a lot more on just doing what you do and proving to people that you're brilliant in your niche. This does not include creating clickbait so you become popular but nobody knows what you do for real and nobody hires you. This is all about getting you to be the very best that you can be. Does that make sense? Good, I hope so. If not, then that would freak me out. So uh, with that, it's kind of exciting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show so far. And next up, we're going to have some laughs. About time we had some laughs, don't you think? It's Speak On Stage. So now I've got away. Now I've done all my plans. I got away from the zombies in the cupboard. I got away from the zombies in the high street. I got away from the zombies in the forest. I got away from the zombies in the, the post-apocalyptic city uh, and then I got a boat and a taxi and an Uber and now I'm in the Maldives which is a gorgeous island or set of islands about a thousand islands and uh, apart from the fact that you you can't go out hunting anything apart from fish lots of fish 
Yummy fish. Um, you have peace and quiet, and you just chill out, and it's kind of nice doing this, you see? Oh yeah, this is how we roll. In fact, to be honest with you, this works for me really, really well. I'd be happy living here for a very, very long time. Can you just see that a bit? Just wonderful. I'm zooming in my face. Happy face. Lovely David's very happy now. And you can see I'm just going to go swimming in a bit. Uh, just checking. Clear water. No zombies. Nothing. Not even killer sharks. Just me and my curtains. And I can be laid back. So today was a Halloween show. I hope you enjoyed it. It's all about the dangers of what would happen if we got attacked by zombies. And as it worked out, we lost 180, no, 100 days, we'd be 181 left us on the planet. But then we'd defend ourselves and we'd repopulate the Earth. So we'd be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Honestly, we'd be fine. Just make sure you wear a mask. Um, otherwise, it could go a lot worse than that. So with that, I'm going to leave you with two videos back to back. First one is my heroes, Daryl and Carol and Barrel and Charol and Rick from The Walking Dead with a special for the Red Nose Day. Filmed a couple of years ago, um, but it was kind of cool. I thought I'd share it because it was appropriate and funny with today's show. And then a segment, which is one of my favorite bits from the Bad Lip Reading Show, which is a YouTube channel. They basically take the way that people, in fact, can you hear the music here? I've got music, it's really nice. Be positive. That, that makes you feel good, doesn't it? We're on our island in the Maldives now, and it's just, it's beautiful. I'm gonna go fishing. Might order a pizza. Um, what pizza would you like? Uh, flesh pizza, please. Zombie flip. No, none, none. I'll just have fish. Fish and chips. No chips. I love fish. I'll catch myself. I'll go for a swim. I'll take this off. Not a problem. Okay. So basically, here we are in an island, and I'm gonna leave you with two videos which I find very funny. First one is. Uh, the cast of The Walking Dead a couple of seasons ago, but it's still very good. And also my favourite bit from the, the Bad Lip um, reading um, channel. And we do loads of stuff about about Biden versus Trump. We got a brilliant one all about the last gen, um, general debate that they had, the first debate, where they look at what people are saying and they voice over what they might have said if it was something weird and funny. As opposed to what they really said. Are you with me? It's kind of cool. So, I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for your time. I love playing with you. Enjoy the Industry Icon program. Make sure you take the Saturday, and I'll be back with you to talk about some incredible stuff. I've got a show lined up for you, which you will love. You'll love all about telemedicine and the future of health across the globe. And that's one which, if you're involved in any kind of medical work, or you're interested in it, and you're paying insurance or not paying insurance, then it will blow you away because there's loads of opportunities for you to get involved. Meanwhile, on behalf of myself, I'll go see if I can find my family. They're probably wandering around looking for food or people to eat. Um, it's been a pleasure playing with you. Look after yourself. I'll see you soon. Speak on stage. This hey, your milkshakes I got. <laughs> Yoda. That's an idiot. This is, I got the extra BGAs, right? Yeah, sure. Cool. Wow, yeah. thank you. Get the hell out. Ow. Get out. Yeah. Ow. Oh, you got a what? little stuff. Oh, I mean, it's just so much blood and gore and horror. Mm. There's more than that, though. It's the suspense and the drama and the horror. Yeah, I said horror. I mean, don't you just wish you could do something... Lighter. Well, I don't know. I mean, it'd be kind of amazing, freeing to do something completely different. Mm. Something that would bring sweetness and light into the world. Yeah, yeah. Something like... The Walking Dead Red Nose Day Special. Starring Andrew Lincoln as Sheriff Rick Grimes. Norman Reedus as Daryl Dixon. And Merle's Hand as Merle's Hand. And featuring Sonequa Martin-Green and the high-impact, low-key, charitable Boogie Down Dancers. Introducing Daryl's family. Jeff Goldblum as Professor Reginald Dixon. Yvette Nicole Brown as Auntie Izzy Dixon. And Zebutar, the unconquerable Dixon. 
with Stephen Young as Glenn, with his partner, Edmund Roddington III. Josh McDermott as Eugene Porter. Christian Zaratos as Rosita Espinosa. With special guest stars, Zach Shepard as Han Solo and Chris Hardwick as Han Solo. With music by Coldplay. David Morrissey. And a 16-minute drum solo by Melissa McBride. With Ross Marquand as Columbo Jack Nicholson. And an animated Walking Dead story from Robot Chicken. Still in progress. Tonight on the Walking Dead Red Nose Day special. No. We ain't doing that. No. Alas, we shan't. Why you say stuff like that? Alas, we shan't. You know you got something on your... Mm -hmm. No, wait, wait, wait. Just hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Right there. Happy Red Nose Day, everyone. Who are you talking to? Let's get to it. We're on Broadway. I once knew a kid, his tongue fell off in his sleep. La bibbidi bibbidum, what? La bibbidi bibbidum. This is a violet. No, it isn't. Yeah, well, it could be a flower. The other night, there was this movie that was all about gardens called Bloody Shrimp. You got a problem. Uh, yeah. I just found out that we missed Halloween. Yeah. I always wanted a Wookiee, yeah. but I found out they weren't real. Thanks for nothing, George Lucas. La bibbidi bibbidum. La bibbidi bibbidum. La bibbidi bibbidum. It's old. La bibbidi bibbidum. No more. La bibbidi bibbidum. Won't stop it. La bibbidi bibbidum. Like a dope thief. Cluck. Went the chicken. And that's how they do it. On Broadway. <laughs> That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the show. Normal service will be resumed on the next episode of Speak on Stage. Meanwhile, have an amazing Halloween and don't go out alone. You never know who's out there. Bye. <laughs> And that's it for today's podcast. I hope you really enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure having you here with me. If you go to speakonstage.com, everything you need will be there. You get access to my blog. You get past and present podcasts. Find out about the events I rock coming. And also, you could join the Game Changers and join our global community, our membership. We're changing the world. Similarly, if you really want to push your brand and get speaking gigs all around the world, then you've got to become an industry icon. Book a session with me, we'll have a chat about it, and you can get our online courses to become an amazing speaker and also position yourself as the very best in your niche. I look forward to catching you soon on another podcast. Meanwhile, have an amazing day.